What's up beatmakers, Bassclef here, and today we're gonna to take a look at one of the new effects in Ableton Live 10, the drum bus. This is gonna be super handy for giving your drums power, energy, and gluing them together too. So let's jump into Ableton. All right, here's our drum bus plugin, and it's got a couple of sections we're gonna go through, but overall it's an analog style compressor, overdrive, and enhancer. Now the first section in it is your input section. You've got a drive control for adding that drive and three different types. The soft drive is sort of like a wavetable distortion. The medium drive is more like a limiting distortion and the hard one is more like a clipping distortion with a bit of a low end boost too. Let's see what they sound like. You really feel that low end in the hard one, huh? Okay, now let's take a look at the next things. We have a trim and a compression. Now the compression is just a fixed button. You just switch it on and it's sort of optimized for drums. You can't really control anything, but the input level lets you kind of control how hard you drive the compression. So by backing off the trim, we can reduce the compression. Let me show what I mean. So this is no compression and then I'll switch it on. So that's nice to have a little bit of control to dial in your sounds. Now it's going to add quite a bit of volume with a lot of these settings. So remember to set your output level to be basically the same when you turn the plugin on or off. This is going to help you know if your setting is actually making the drums better or if it's just sounding louder. It's easy to get fooled with this. Let's see how our volume's going. We'll dial in some drive too. Huge volume difference, huh? That feels better. Let's look at section two. Okay, this section is your mid to high section. This is gonna control things like your snares, claps, all the way up to your cymbals and hi-hats. First knob in here is the crunch knob. This really brings forward the mid-range. Let's try bringing some up. Then we have a dampening knob, which is kind of like a gentle low-pass filter. Now we can roll off a bit of top end with that and get a bit more of a lo-fi, dusty sound. I'm just gonna take a little off of this. Final nub is transient. Now this one's fun. It's kind of like an SPL transient designer. Uh, if we push it to the right, it's gonna make the drum sound a little punchier and a lot longer and stretched out. Hear what it does to the cymbals? Now if we take it to the left, it's gonna tighten them up, more like gating and shortening the note length. So you can really dial in exactly the sound you need for your song. It's also fun to automate this in the middle of the song. Okay, let's look at the final section. Section three is all about the low frequencies. First knob in there is the boom knob that's gonna add some low end enhancement. So you can see it like adds a lot of resonance and ringing and a long tonal note to your kick drum. You don't always want this, but sometimes it's great. Uh, you can choose the frequency you want that to happen at too with the next knob. Dial it in just right. You can also choose the length with the decay knob. And if we try to set it, say, close to maybe F, it gets these little plus and minus signs next to the, the note number. If you click that, it'll lock it on exactly to that note. Bam, so there we're exactly on F now. And if we wanted to hear just the effect of what's happening, what's getting added, you can click this little headphone button. Now over here, we also get a readout of uh, how much, you know, additional enhancement, bass and compression is getting added in. 
we get our output level, output volume, and a dry and wet control. So we can do a blend, a bit of like um, parallel compression. Sometimes it's nice to mix in a bit of dry signal to make it feel not so squashed or overly processed. But doing house music stuff like this, there's a little bit of a problem. Sometimes having your kick in the same group doesn't work out so well. For some drummers, it could be fine, like hip hop and trap sometimes. Um, but for house, I personally prefer to take my kick out of the group, process my claps, hats, and cymbals in that one group, and my kick on its own. But sometimes we have a drum bus too. Let's try that. So I'm gonna take the kick out, put it over here. And I've got a drum bus here, which I already did a couple of settings on. And let's see how that sounds, switching that on and off on the kick. So I'm just adding a little boom. I got a little wet and dry and a little bit of volume balance there. And that's just giving it a bit of low end extension. Now that we got the kick out, we can maybe go a little crazier with our other one. Okay, let's do a quick AB. I'm gonna play him with the drum bus switched on and then I'm gonna bypass it so you can compare. All right, that's the drum bus plugin that came out with Ableton Live 10. I've made a few presets for you guys and bundled them up and you can download them just up here. If you liked the video today, please click subscribe and the bell icon next to it because then you'll be notified each time I post another tutorial like this. And if you do like my tutorials, there's plenty more on my website, basscliff.com. All right, thanks for watching, Beatmakers. Till next time.